Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Oshley here. And I just got home from work, so excuse the professional attire. But I just got some book mail. I probably got it at some point early last week and it's probably been waiting on me. But the way that my apartment mail room is set up with their limited hours, couldn't get to it to today. So this was sent to me actually courtesy of whoop, Penguin, Penguin Random House. Didn't want to get that wrong. So um, Penguin has actually been doing a great job with reaching out to black booktubers and booktubers of color, I've noticed, and adding us on to the marketing list and the PR list. So shout out to you, Penguin Random House. Really appreciate that. So I wanted to go ahead and unbox this and show you guys what they sent me. So I thought it would be fun to unbox it here. I wanted to share it on a platform where I have um, the most reach and then I might also share it on my bookstagram account so heads up if you didn't know I now have a bookstagram account usually I link my personal Instagram down below but I decided I was getting bored with of Instagram the platform and I just had been thinking about and mulling over the idea of starting a bookstagram account don't worry I'm not gonna kill these scissors are pretty dull um, or hurt myself I should say but what was I saying? Oh yeah. So I have been mulling over the idea of starting a bookstagram for a while now, just to bring some like interest and spark and creativity for me personally back into the Instagram platform. These dogs, y'all know my life. Um, so that's what I have done. So I will link my bookstagram account down below. Please go follow me. I'd really appreciate it. I'm looking to get more followers on there and more of you guys so we can interact and talk and chat and have a good old time. So you'll probably see this. If you go follow me, you'll probably see this on bookstagram a little bit later. But anyways, box has been opened. I'll give you guys a little peek so you can see the inside. Hey. All right, so there's the close-up of the inside. I have a nice little note here that I wanted to read to you guys. Dear reader, this is cute. Dear reader, more often than not, hold on, let me see if I can get these dogs kicked out of here so we can have a civilized video, even though I'm sitting on the floor. We'll ignore that. Being a dog parent is so rewarding. <laughs> it is though. You just have to get past the first year. Okay, back to the sentimental note. Dear reader, more often than not, the words black excellence indicate a certain measure of success and fame. In fact, whenever I hear the whenever I hear the phrase Jay-Z rapping, black excellence, opulence, decadence rings out in my head like a chorus. Yet the luxuries he speaks on are only the fruits of hard work. In our reality, our excellence lies in striving for such heights in spite of the struggle. In practice, black excellence is brazen resistance and resilience in a world and country that would prefer silence instead. It is having the temerity to center our voices, our stories, and our blackness because the world doesn't get to frame our narrative. It's understanding that a single person's success is only a partial victory. True excellence comes when we make space for the rest of our skin folk and work for our communities instead of just ourselves. In the books, that excellence shines when we break free of limitations that value our pain and minimize our joy. Amen. We are excellent when we strive for the full spectrum of blackness across many genres, styles, and all sorts of peculiarities. A River of Royal Blood is my debut novel, a dream that required a whole village behind me, not to mention years of work by black authors charting a path into this industry. The only way to continue in that legacy of excellence is by raising more black voices in every realm of the book world, from authors and librarians to bloggers, bookstagram and booktube. As the black national anthem reminds us to lift every voice, I encourage us all to raise our mouths to the sky and press our pens to paper. Forget the fear of the people telling us that we aren't black enough or we're too black. Your voice is precious by virtue of being yours. You're excellent already. Amanda Joy. This was really, really lovely. Like, ugh. Let me show you Amanda Joy's debut novel. This is an advanced reader's copy. A River of Royal Blood. How freaking gorgeous is this cover, you guys? I'm getting the camera to focus on it. It's absolutely stunning. 
Oh, it's so good. I'm really excited for this. So, I'm not 100% sure when this is coming out. Oh, October 2019. So, mark your calendars. Go pre-order. Amanda, Amanda Joy's debut. 17-year-old Eva is a princess born with the magic of blood and marrow, a dark and terrible magic that hasn't been seen for generations in the vibrant but fractured country of Meyer. It's last... Teddy. Ted Word. It's last known... Why do I even try? Its last known practitioner was Queen Reina, who toppled the native Khmer royalty and massacred thousands, ooh, including her own sister, eight generations ago, thus beginning the rival heir tradition. Living in Reina's long and dark shadow, Ava must now face her older sister, Issa, I'm not 100% sure on these pronunciations, in a battle to the death if she hopes to ascend to the ivory throne, because... <laughs> Because in the Queendom of Meyer, only the strongest, most ruthless rulers survive. When Ava or Eva is attacked, not sure, by an assassin just weeks before the battle with her sister, she discovers there is more to the attempt on her life that meets the eye. And it isn't just her sister who wants to see her dead. As tensions escalate, Ava is forced, I'm going to start calling her Eva because it's, 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 it's with an E. Eva is forced to turn to a fate instructor of mythic proportions and a mysterious and handsome Kaimar prince for help in growing her magic into something to fear. Because despite the love she still has for her sister, her sister, <laughs> her sister, Eva will have to choose Issa's death or her own. A River of Royal Blood is an enthralling debut set in a lush North African inspired fantasy world that subtly but powerfully challenges our notions of power, history, and identity. Okay, October 2019. Next, we have Tochi Onyabuchi's um, coming up here. This is War Girls, and it looks like it's on sale also October 2019. So she wrote Beasts Made of Night. So for those of you, I'm going to try to get this video up as soon as possible. So if it's Tuesday and you're seeing this video, go Oshale, pat on the back, girl. I'm going to try to get this video up ASAP only because um, right now for my book club, A Seat at the Table book club, we are voting for our August book and we have five options on our Goodreads page, A Seat at the Table book club. Go check it out. And one of the options is Beasts Made of Night by Tochi Onyabuchi. So I kind of want to read that one. I I'm kind of hoping that one wins so I can read that one so then I can read War Girls. I don't think that they are like in tandem. It says the year is 2172. Climate change and nuclear disasters have rendered much of Earth unlivable. Only the lucky ones have escaped to space colonies in the sky. In a war-torn Nigeria, hey, Niger, battles are fought using flying deadly meeks and soldier or mechs, and soldiers are outfitted with bionic limbs and artificial organs meant to protect them from the harsh, radiation-heavy climate. Across the nation, as the years-long civil war rages on, survival becomes the only way of life. Two sisters, Onyi and Ifi, dream of more. Their lives have been marked by violence and political unrest. Still, they dream of peace, of hope, of a future together. They're willing to fight an entire war to get there. From acclaimed author, Tochi Onibuchi comes an immersive, action-packed, deeply personal series opener for fans of Inedi Okorafor, Marie Lu, and Paola Basigal... Basigalupi. Okay, I'm super excited for this. So, this comes out in October, so there you go. Next up, I have another... Let's see, when does this release? This one is called... Do they, do they have little notes in them? Oh yeah, they have little notes in them. That's cute. Oh, that's cute. It's from the authors. Okay, I think I'm going to read these to you guys. Do you guys mind? I don't know. I just want to give these authors voices. So I kind of want to read them. Sorry. I'll let you know where to skip ahead if you don't want to hear this. Dear reader, I thought it was simple. You write a book and if you're lucky, it goes on a shelf and you have the honor of walking past one day. 
Those summers when my homes were the public library and whatever Barnes and Nobles was nearest were when and where I cultivated that dream, sat on that egg without knowing for how long, but ready to do it for however long it took for the dream to hatch to life and take flight. So much of my reading and writing life was lived in isolation that I simply figured that any excitement I held for it had an audience of one. Perhaps the greatest gift of becoming a published author is discovering just how wrong I was. Discovering bookstagrammers and booktubers and book bloggers, readers in every corner of the internet being loudly and proudly excited about books has been a singular joy. Perhaps the single most important episode on my journey to becoming uh, to become a writer happened during a study abroad trip my junior year of high school. I was spending that winter in France. My favorite novel at the time, and still is, The Count of Monte Cristo. It had all the swashbuckling adventure and star-crossed romance and epic revenge quests I'd loved reading about so much. I loved that book so much. My roommate and I soon discovered that Alexandre Dumas' home, now a writer's museum, was just over 30 minutes outside of Paris. It was even called the Chateau de Monte Cristo. Immediately, we set about organizing a trip. My mouth hung open as I wandered from room to room. I even thought I could feel the man's power humming through the floorboards. But something stopped me dead in my tracks. It was a portrait, and under it was an inscription of his name. The man in the portrait was black. My favorite writer of all time was the same color as me. Arguably the most famous French writer in history. Sorry, Victor Hugo was the same color as I did not freaking know that my mind is blown like I literally just felt my breath just stop in my chest how did I not know what ever since that visit my course was set what the impact of that episode was twofold the first was that it affirmed for me that I was headed in the right direction the second was that I began to look for myself in every other part of this ecosystem surrounding books. Wow, I'm gonna have to sit with that after this video. Whew. Other writers and readers who resembled me, I hungered to meet them, to see them, so that we could say to each other that we're heading in the right direction. So I entrust to you, War Girls, the book of my heart. My hope is that someday I can do for someone else what Alexandra Dumas did for me. I'm getting emotional. No. With beautiful, complex, and complicated blackness in the DNA of this book's insides and outsides, my goodness, this cover, I hope I can say to the reader who holds this thing in their hands, you're heading in the right direction. As I just now got to get loudly and proudly and a little bit tearfully excited about a book, I hope you do the same and that you hear me when I say you're heading in the right direction. Sincerest regards, Tochi J. Onyabuchi. Wow. And this cover is stunning. Like, I know girls like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can see myself. <sighs> that letter was life. Wow. Next up, I have um, another one, The Stars and the Blackness Between Them by Junouda Petrus. Jounda Petrus. I don't want to mispronounce her name. But this is another advanced reader's copy. This one will be out, it looks like, ooh, September 2019, you guys. I'll have the exact dates listed. Another letter, once again, I will let you know where to skip ahead to if you do not want to read this. But again, I just, or hear this, I just have to give these authors a voice if I'm sharing it, you know, the whole box with you guys. I just feel like it's important. Friend, I'm so excited to share this book with you. Writing it broke my heart wide open in the most beautiful ways. I'm grateful that these spirits and stories chose me to be their vessel onto the page. In reading this book, I hope you are inspired with a sense of magic, hope, self-love, and healing for you and the work you do. My first novel encompasses a lot. Whitney Houston, queerness, ancestral time travel, music's hold on the black psyche, healing magic, astrology, mass incarceration, and first sweet love. A black girl in Trinidad loses love, crosses a continent, and finds love again in minibus in the arms of another black girl. A girl like her, but also different in ways that expand her. A wild and magical elder finds a way to pass on her ancestral wisdom and healing to her queer grandchild. An incarcerated black man, an astrologer who has more wisdom about himself and the universe than most free people, transcends death row. 
It's a lot, but so is being a queer black woman in America. This book is heavy, but also light, full of feelings layered and beautiful and truthful and black and cosmic and limitless. In the end, I hope you'll see that the stars and the blackness between them is an ode to a world that I never got to experience. A place where black girls are lovable and must navigate romantic situations worthy of their complexity. A place where black girls are magical and wild. A place where black girls make things happen for each other. It is my song for all of the ways black sweetness, pleasure, and desire have been invisibilized from the imagination of those of us with black bodies. May this book love on you and make visible your own blackness between the stars. Love and light to you, Janunda Petras Nasa. And I hope I'm saying her name correctly. But this cover is absolutely beautiful. And this is what you have to look forward to if you if that's something you want to take a part in. Um, take a part in. <laughs> what? Who am I? What's going on? Um, you can go pre-order this. But... 16-year-old Audrey is heartbroken having just found out she's going to live in America with her father because her mother caught her with her secret girlfriend, the pastor's daughter. Audrey's grandmother, a dancer who drives a white convertible Mercedes and has a few secrets of her own, reassures Mabel that she won't lose her roots, not even in some place called Minneapolis. America have their spirits too, believe me, she tells Audrey. Terrible accent, so sorry. Minneapolis. 16-year-old Mabel is staring at a picture of Whitney Houston, trying to figure out why she feels the way she feels about her ex Terrell, about her girl Jada, and that moment they had in the woods, and about the vague feeling of illness that's plagued her all summer. Mabel's reverie, Mabel's reverie is cut short when her dad announces that a friend and his just arrived from Trinidad daughter are coming for dinner. Mabel falls hard and fast for Audrey, and she's determined to help Audrey find her way in America. Never an easy thing for a black girl, as she knows, but their romance takes a turn when test, when test results reveal exactly why results reveal exactly why Mabel has been feeling low-key sick all summer. Suddenly, it's Audrey who must care for Mabel as she faces a deeply uncertain future. Told in two lush and lyrical voices, Petrus's debut conjures a love that is stronger than hatred, prison, and death, and as vast as the blackness between the stars. Okay, and last up in the box, I have, obviously, Stories from My Timeline by Akila Hughes. And it looks like this one, it will be on sale in September. Her hair is everything, her outfit, love it. Um, so comedian and activist Akila Hughes shares everything about her journey from a childhood in the South to the big screen while dispensing invaluable big sister style advice to a generation of future YouTubers. So it looks like this is kind of like, you know, stories from her life. Again, I'll let you know where to skip ahead if you do not want to hear this. Hey there. Thank you so much for taking the time to read, obviously, stories from my timeline. When I started writing this book, I had a lot of anxiety about writing a good book. Presenting my life in a way that was honest and open and about the way it would be received. Since then, I've grown up a bit about the whole how it will be received thing. That is to say, if my book gets to my people, then I have nothing to worry about. That is to say, if my book gets to my people, then I have nothing to worry about. The truth is, I've spent a lot of my life worrying if something I did was too black or not black enough, and realize that those things don't mean anything. Specifically, as a black artist in a position as vulnerable as it is, assumed to be the voice of everyone who looks like me, seriously, I can no longer feel pressure to be anything but myself. And that's why I'm excited for you to read it. Because art by black people matters, and it also should be allowed to be as unique and interesting, as heartbreaking and inspiring, motivating and real as any other group of artists work. I hope as an artist or creative, you feel like you got the space to bring all of the facets of you to your work. It's so important to lift each other up, give each other space to shine and represent our cultures in as many ways as possible. I'm proud and very lucky to be working with Razorbill and to have been given the space to wax nostalgic about the internet, my pets, and growing up with three siblings and living in the South. I hope that this book gives you a laugh and maybe inspires you to continue making bomb ass work with no apologies. So thank you again for continuing the legacy of black art and creativity and thanks for reading my little book. XX Akila Hughes. So in sharing these uh, words with you from the author, I hope you feel a personal connection like I do. And if any of these books sound interesting, then definitely go pre-order them. So this sounds like she's talking about her life. Um, so I'm really excited about this. 
and I'm not gonna go you know I, this video has gotten too long so I'm not gonna go into the synopsis because this is pretty much about her life and the things that she's been through and she's dispensing advice so it sounds great so I Goodreads it's linked down below if you want to check out all of these books Amazon if you want to pre-order or you can also get them at your local bookstore so these two I believe are coming out in September yeah this one's in September yes September 2019 for these two and then these two will be out in October 2019 so yeah definitely go check them out and support these black authors and artists if you are interested in their work and I will catch you guys in the next video Mwah! bye guys